Well, Eric Boyd has been found guilty on 36 counts, including first degree felony murder, kidnapping and rape. The jury returned their verdict late this afternoon. Shannon Christian and Chris Newsom were carjacked, tortured, raped and killed in January of 2007. Attorney Don Bosch has been with us since the trial started. He's back with us today uh, to kind of wrap up our coverage and let's talk about um, the verdict first. We want to listen in and on the moment we heard that verdict. With respect to count one, the first offense charged, first degree felony murder of Hugh Christopher Newsom during the perpetration of robbery of Hugh Christopher Newsom. Did the jury reach a verdict? Yes, we did. What is your verdict? Guilty. You can hear a gasp in the courtroom. Don, let's talk about these charges. 36 out of 36 counts, but two of those were actually lesser charges. Right. They were on some of the underlying crimes. I believe they involved robbery. Uh, and, and they convicted Boyd, I believe, of facilitation to commit. That's a little less than the principal crime. But at the end of the day, it really becomes meaningless because with the murder convictions come a life sentence. And in this case, life with the possibility of parole. But that's 51 years for Mr. Boyd assuming that the judge does not run those sentences consecutively, that is, on top of each other, uh, which could mean much more than 51 years. And frankly, I expect Judge McGee to do that at the sentencing date later on in the fall. Let's talk about, though, why the state didn't seek life without the possibility for parole. Sure. So first of all, Mr. Boyd's 48 years old. He still owes three years to the federal government on that conviction, approximately three years. His sentence starts today. But at life with the possibility of parole, that's 51 years before he has a possibility of getting out of jail. That would put him in at 99. Mm -hmm. If the state had sought life without parole or the death penalty, it would have required two lawyers, much more time, a much greater depth of appeal should he have been convicted and sentenced to death. And really, it was a wise use of state money. They've ensured that Mr. Boyd is going to die in prison. Mm -hmm. After the, the verdict was read, um, the judge did do some sentencing. Is that normal? It is. The only sentence the judge can impose on the murder convictions is life with the possibility of parole. He has no discretion to do anything else. So by imposing it today, he started the clock running on both the motion for new trial and ultimately what will be the appeal in this case. And then obviously September 18th sentencing will continue on that date? That's correct. He'll sentence on the other underlying crimes that weren't murder. And he'll also make a decision as to whether the murder convictions for Shannon Christian and Christopher Newsom are stacked, that is, put on top of each other, which would yield 102 years just on those convictions alone. Let's talk about the families. We heard the gasp in the courtroom, an emotional day, certainly, as the verdicts were read. Let's listen in. I don't want anyone to ever forget Shannon or Chris. They were good kids, and they deserve that much. It did never bring Chris back, but it is a closure and maybe we can get our life back and uh, be able to do what we want to do. We'll never get justice on this earth, not for what they did. But I think we got, we got them all. And I can go to my grave now, satisfied that I fought a good fight. Certainly can't imagine the emotional turmoil this family has been through over the last 12 years. Um, it, it's emotional. We know it's not over for these families. Um, but does this bring some closure to them? I, I think absolutely. And I've talked to some of the people that were involved from both the prosecution and defense side, particularly for the Newsoms. Mm -hmm. They were able to finally have their day seeing Mr. Boyd convicted of actually being the one that killed their son. And they have pushed as hard as anybody in this case for the prosecution of Eric Boyd. They were successful in getting it. The state was able to develop new evidence and the conviction was had. I think it really brings some closure to them. The appeals process is always difficult, but there is no new evidence, no new testimony, assuming that the convictions are upheld on appeal. This largely brings these matters to a close. There are still some things going on, but it's likely the legal process is all but over as it relates to these families. And this is heart wrenching to watch. Uh, these cases are tough for everybody. They're, t they're tough on the families, they're tough on the prosecution, they're tough on the defense. Yeah. And so um, I'm glad that after 12 years that these are largely over. All right, Don Bosch, thank you for being with us. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Thank you.